I'm Frank Marcus, and I've come to beautiful northern Italy, where the weather is actually worse than it was when I left home in Detroit, uh, to sample the latest raging bull from Lamborghini, the Gallardo 570-4 Superleggera. That name tells you most of what you need to know. The familiar gasoline direct-injected V10's engine computer has been tweaked to give us 10 more horsepower for 570 metric horses, or 562 SAE. The Dash 4 indicates that it's four-wheel drive, which is going to come in real handy today. And uh, the Superleggera means super lightweight. That indicates that 154 pounds have been shed from the standard Gallardo. Where did that uh, weight go? Well, uh, 88 pounds of it is due to carbon fiber parts. Uh, carbon fiber replaces the entire engine compartment lid, the rear diffuser, the sill panels, the mirror caps, uh, and some interior trim like the door panels and the tunnel. Another 29 pounds comes from forged aluminum wheels attached by titanium bolts. And that's unsprung weight, which is great for handling and performance as well. The rest of it comes from things like replacing all the glass behind the B-pillar with polycarbonate and ditching things like the cup holders and a few things like that. Air conditioning and power windows, however, are still standard. This carbon fiber wing and engine cover with the polycarbonate window is incredibly light. We open it up to reveal a V10 engine that has not changed at all physically, but the uh, controller has been reprogrammed to just squeeze out another 10 horsepower. Standard brakes on the 570-4 Superleggera are steel, uh, vented and drilled, 14.4 inches in front grabbed by 8 piston calipers, or 14 inches in the rear grabbed by 4 piston. This car has the op optional carbon ceramic brakes on it. Those are 15 inches in the front, 14 in the back, and they only get 6 piston calipers in the front. Inside the Superleggera, there are a number of lightweight touches as well. I'm sitting in the ultralight sports seat, which has a carbon fiber shell and no airbag. Apparently, we will be able to get that seat or the standard seat with the airbags as a no-cost option in the U.S. The center console and both door panels are covered in gorgeously finished uh, carbon fiber, and everything is swathed in Alcantara, which is lighter than leather. Again, another lightweight touch. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's still quite damp out, and we're running uh, winter tires on this car, so being able to extract the last little uh, bit of performance is not going to work out today. But the driving we've had uh, in and around Santagata has been very revealing of uh, the chassis anyway. It's definitely a little harder edge, definitely a little crisper acceleration, I think. And, you know, I was just here a month and a half or two months ago to drive the 458 Italia, which is, of course, this car's main competition. Uh, the two cars look quite similar on paper. They both have 562 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque. The Ferrari also has a little more electronics in their chassis. Suspension is adjustable. This one is fixed. This one has uh, stiffer anti-roll bars than the normal Lamborghini uh, Gallardos do. So on handling grounds, I wouldn't want to bet against the, the Ferrari being a slightly uh, quicker of a round of a, uh, a road course based on what they can do with some of their electronics. I think probably the average driver who isn't an expert, certainly on days like today, will really appreciate the all-wheel drive, especially if you put all-season or winter tires on in this time of year. So, what do we think of the new Gallardo Superleggera? Well, it's awesome. I mean, obviously you take one of the world's most expressive supercars and you improve its weight ratio by about a half pound per horsepower, sharpen up the handling with some new anti roll bars, and of course we're going to like it. Of course, the more important question is, how is it going to stack up against its arch rival from 20 miles away, the Ferrari 458 Italia? That one's way too close to call. When these car specifications are right on top of each other, uh, right down to the 3.4 second 0 to 62 mile per hour time they both claim for acceleration. But now that I've driven both cars on these roads around Romania, uh, Emilia Romagna, I'd have to handicap the Ferrari 458 for a, a professional driver on a closed race course. But then those aren't the people who buy these cars. And if you put an average rich guy in both of these cars, and you send him out on roads like we've had today, he's probably going to feel a lot more comfortable and get a lot more performance out of the sure-footed traction of this Lamborghini. Of course, the only way to really settle this question is with a true motor trend comparison test. Stay tuned for one of those in the next coming months.